<clears throat> no. Okay, there we go. No. Oh, looks like we're good. Hey Z stars, what's good in the proverbial hood? It's your girl Epic Zara, aka Zara, and I'm back with another video. I know we're kind of close today. That's because I'm using one of my new lenses. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I got a few new lenses. By a few, I mean two, because I mean we're not going like that yet. <laughs> And I've been using them lately to shoot. So if you guys can guess the focal length of this lens down below, I'll shout you out in my next video. Anyway, I digress. Let's actually get right into this video. Okay, so today on my natural hair show, we're gonna be talking about how I literally grew my hair to mid back length by doing absolutely 100% of nothing. Like, it does not have to be a struggle to have long hair, but I will say this, there's no secret, there's no witchcraft, we don't do that here on this channel. It's really just patience and chilling. I will actually give you guys a nice little length check, but you have to keep watching the video to see that happen. So stay tuned, we have a lot in store. I'm gonna give you guys all my secrets to growing your hair by literally doing 100% of nothing. Now before we get into the video, please don't forget to do the four simple things I always ask you all to do. Please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up so YouTube knows that you enjoy this type of content and it lets me know that you guys enjoy my tips and tricks don't forget to guess the focal length of this new lens <laughs> comment down below and let me know what tips or tricks you guys have for lazy naturals or people who are trying to be super laissez-faire be sure to share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones and last but certainly not least subscribe to this channel y'all and turn those notifications on so you know every time I post a new video now I want to develop this really special relationship with you guys I love you guys I hope you guys love me so let's you know keep this family going let's grow together so anyway moving on let's get right into the video leave your hair alone don't look at your hair don't touch your hair. Don't think about your hair. I cannot stress this enough, y'all. This is literally the major key to having Rapunzel hair, bruv. My hair is legit the longest it's ever been. And I promise you, it's because I have not been touching it at all. I've literally just been covering it up. Now, I've always loved protective styling, but this experience has reminded me how beneficial it is for somebody like me. So if you're low porosity, if your scalp is super tender, if you're protein sensitive, maybe protective styling is also for you. A lot of people will say, Oh, I hate protective styling. It never works for me. <laughs> but sis, or bro, that's probably because you're not doing it right. It's supposed to protect your hair, not rip your hair out your head. So if your box braids are two inches too tight, then you're not doing it right. <laughs> Bart. Another reason why you may not be into protective styling is because you're not actually taking care of your hair while you're protecting it. Now, that's like having a room in your house. You don't clean it. You don't do anything to it. But by the time you get back to the room, there are rats. So there are little critters, there are termites and all sorts of other stuff in the room because you have not been maintaining it. Just because you're protecting your hair and not doing anything to it doesn't mean you shouldn't actually treat it well. So to give you all an example, I left my hair alone but I was still moisturizing it. That's not taking down my cornrows or my twist. I literally would spritz it, pop my leave-in on, and pop on some oil. And that's why I was able to see such popping growth in such a short amount of time. Now, I know I've said this in other videos and I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but wigs have been a huge blessing for me. I get bored easily with my hair because, you know, as a slay mama, I mean, you gotta be changing it up. So wigs have helped me to change up my look fairly often without actually sacrificing my individuality. So your girl has been keeping it on and popping and keeping her hair mad healthy with some really fresh wigs. There is a way to wear wigs. If you're wearing your wig and it's rubbing up all against your edges, girl or guy, you're not doing it right. Wear a wig cap, please. It's too late in the game to be caught slipping and allowing your edges to just disappear behind your ear because you're not wearing a wig cap. No, hunty. A wig cap is really necessary for frontal or closure wigs. That lace can be super harsh on your edges. So for me, I make sure that my edges are really, really covered up when I'm wearing my wigs. You can also use like a gentle pomade or edge control 
control to hold down your edges and then place on your wig cap so that your edges don't snag on your wig. This is how my edges stay nice and bushy whilst I'm doing this kind of protective styling. Another thing I do when I'm wearing wigs is I make sure I never, ever, 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 ever allow any stylist to braid my edges into those cornrows like sis or bro. That's one of the primary reasons wig wearers and weave wearers experience edge loss. The edges are already quite delicate. They're finer typically. As long as you make sure they're moisturized and not tangled, you'll be fine. Now, for those of you that wanna experience the absurd growth with wigs, but you don't wanna get a frontal or a closure, the crochet wig is another option. I actually used to wear crochet wigs a lot more. My current crochet wigs are kind of crusty, dusty, musty. So as a sleigh mama, I can't be wearing those outside. Now, normally when I have my crochet wigs, I wear a twist. I just make sure they're super soft and super moisturized. You have another video where I talk about the benefits of crochet wigs as well as other ways to grow your hair with little to no effort so here we go you guys can check that out right here just open it up in another tab that way you can go to it right after you watch this video you may already take your vitamins, but I'm letting you know that this is super essential. And instead of taking like your typical run of the mill, women's one daily or men's one daily vitamin, take a hair vitamin. My favorite is main metabolism. And I'll reference you guys to my favorite products video right here, as well as link you down below to my Amazon store where you can literally see all of my favorite products. Digression aside though, I love that vitamin so much. And I literally just take it every day. And I like to take it before bed because apparently vitamins are more effective effective right before you sleep at least that's what I've heard I've seen great results it's fantastic on my skin and my hair this is an exceptional way to ensure that you're getting all the nutrients you need in your body as well as receiving excess so that your body sends the excess to your hair your skin and your nails those are the organs or parts of the body to suffer first when you're malnourished now I can't always ingest all the nutrients I want to be ingesting when I need to ingest them this has been a great way to keep my body pretty nourished in the absence of really fantastic, wholesome food. And I know you guys are probably like, girl, but you're literally in Nigeria. How do you not find a wholesome food? Well, you'd be surprised, y'all. If you guys want a video about Nigerian food and Nigerian living and Nigerian eating, let me know in the comment section down below. We can make that happen. Let water touch your hair. Water is moisture. Moisture is water. Yay! Nepa took light. Oh my god. So guys, Nepa took light. That kind of happens in this country. There's not stable light. But anyway, where were we? Oh, right. Water is moisture. Moisture is water. Before your hair becomes dry, let water touch your hair. That could be every day. That could be every two days. That could be every three days. It depends on where you are in the world. Now, in this particular part of the world, Abuja, Nigeria, it's really essential to be letting water touch your hair like every day. Like right now, it's dry season, AKA Parma time. So you need to make sure that the water is touching your hair very well. Now, one thing I like to do also is I'm kind of lazy. So if I get in the shower, I might just leave my hair uncovered and I'll just pop it under the shower head for a few seconds and let it get saturated. Now I make sure I do this with warm water because I'm low porosity. And remember, if your hair is low porosity, you need to use warm water to ensure that your cuticle is a bit lifted. So when you add your moisturizer, it will actually penetrate the hair shaft. Mind you, I'm not finna be loosening up my cornrows or my twists to be getting my hair wet. And this literally takes two seconds. Now this has been super beneficial for me because it's allowed me to moisturize my hair and keep my hair super duper soft and shiny. My ends are also really, really moisturized and I've managed to completely eliminate breakage, allowing me to retain my length. <laughs> Rapunzel teen. Yo, like put oil on your hair, fam. Now, I don't know about you, but as a slay mama, I like to put oils on my body, you know, so I can be like really soft and kissable or whatever. And I like to put them on my hair as well. So when I'm putting my oil on my body, which is usually like almond or olive or another oil that does not react volatile, that does not react in a volatile way, 
with my hair, I also put it on my hair. In this season, I oftentimes use lotion before I put my oil on my body. So I'll kind of do the same thing with my hair. I'll apply some leave-in to my hair and then I'll add my oil on top to make sure that my hair is really, really moisturized. Now again, this is super easy and does not take away from my normal body care. <coughs> Now again, this is super easy and does not take away from my normal body care routine. And it's literally completely changed up my hair game. Sleep on silk or satin, y'all. This is like the easiest thing you could do to maintain healthy hair and skin. All you have to do is pop on your little satin pillowcase, your little satin sheets or whatever. And if you're feeling tired, you just go to sleep, y'all. Like, I'm personally a bonnet babe, and I'm actually wearing my My Afro Cap bonnet. They also make really fantastic satin pillowcases and a whole bunch of other stuff. Don't brush your hair. Don't detangle your hair. Like, what? For, for why? For what? When my hair is in cornrows or twists, I literally do not touch it. Like, what am I doing? Like, there's no reason. I'm gonna let it be in that state for as long as it wants to be, whether it's one to two months or what have you. I'm gonna make sure I'm keeping it clean or whatever, but I'm not gonna brush or detangle it or anything like that. As much as I love the feel of a brush just running through my hair, my favorite brush happens to be my Tangle Teaser brush, which I will reference down below in the description box. But I mean, if I'm protective styling, why am I brushing my hair? I detangled it beforehand and literally it's not getting tangled up if it's nice and clean and kept neatly, so. So see, again, don't stress yourself. I cannot come and kill myself. Nigerians say this a lot. Basically, it's like, why am I gonna stress myself? There's no, there's no need. If you treat your hair like a typical member of your body as opposed to its own entity, you will live a very stress-free life. Why are you doing the most, Keisha? Calm down, Tunde. No, but on some serious ish, I literally don't do anything to my hair. I do what I wanna do to it whenever I'm doing whatever I wanna do to the rest of my body. I don't like to spend time on it at this point. I just want to be happy and healthy. I really do not have time to be doing a million styles, to be doing a million deep treatments, to be trying a million and one products. No sway, like, uh, I only have time to eat, to sleep, to work, to pray, to play civilizations, to be around my loved ones. I mean, I think that's most of it, but I don't want my hair to consume all of my time. It's become a very insignificant part of my lifestyle. And I know you guys are probably like, yeah, what do you mean insignificant? I know the natural hair Nazis are quaking right now. <laughs> insignificant because I do not devote a lot of time to it, but significant because I still value it and love it. So guys, those are like all my tips, but I. I do want to include a few disclaimers before some of y'all come for me in the comment section and be like, Girl, like you're so nasty, like you need to like scrub your scalp, like what are you doing? Like you do this, you do No, so I'm going to include these disclaimers so you know that, I mean, you still have to maintain your bodily hygiene while you're living this last day fair existence. You don't just forget to shower like nah, boo boo. So disclaimer time. You will note that because your hair is in twists and or cornrows, it will take 10 to 15 minutes from start to finish to shampoo and condition, as well as moisturize and apply a sealant. This is because you do not have to section or detangle your hair. If you're keeping it neat, if you're not messing with it, it should remain fairly organized. A spray leave-in is ideal for these types of styles because it will penetrate the hair more readily than a thicker leave-in that may sit on top of hair that is not free. Before I scrub my body, I shampoo my hair, then I apply my conditioner, I scrub my body, you know, slay mama. And then I rinse my body and rinse out the conditioner with cold water. When I get out, I apply my leave-in, I apply my lotion, I apply oil to my body and my hair, and I keep it moving. It does not need to take time away from you just doing you. To aid growth and keep your scalp really healthy, you may consider doing scalp massages. Now you don't have to be going like this. That's too much stress, y'all. And I have a video actually showing you how I use my favorite tool for my scalp massager that works in the shower. I won't go into detail. You guys can check that out. It's really fantastic and it runs through the many reasons why the scalp massager is flipping holy grail. Now I also have it in my Amazon store, which again is in the description box down below. 
Now you may consider doing rinses and you definitely should still deep condition when your hair is in these protective styles. When my hair is like this, I don't have to do anything super strenuous. And I'm actually probably gonna incorporate rinses when I get my cornrows because it'll make it a lot easier. My hair is already contained and organized and I don't even have to bother with trying to section it, detangle it and do all this other really extra stuff that just makes doing the extra things that boost hair growth a lot more tedious, cumbersome, etc., etc., etc. I'm probably gonna incorporate some rice water rinses and some other things. You guys let me know what you want me to do in the comments down below. Now this last one is very important. You're gonna be putting water on your hair often enough. You don't need to put on your scalp every time, oh. For me, my scalp is naturally a bit dry. I don't know, I'm still trying to work on that. If you guys have any tips, let me know. But I do have to apply water to my scalp. When I do though, I make sure I include tea tree since tea tree oil is a natural antiseptic and antifungal essential oil. Now this has been really great for keeping my itches at bay and just preventing all sorts of really nasty stuff from happening to my hair and my scalp. Now this leads me to my next thing. Make sure your hair is completely dry before you cover it up, you guys. Mildew is not fun, nor is any other type of ailment that results from a wet scalp and wet hair. Okay everyone, hey, how's it going? So as you can see, I'm taking off my little head wrap to reveal my My Afro Cap bonnet and my twists. Now I'm just going to show you guys the length of the back. This is not going to be a super extensive length check. Maybe we'll get into that in the new year. If you want that, we can definitely do that. But yeah, as you can see, the longest piece of my hair is mid back length. It was kind of hard to stretch it out so you can't really see like it's super duper straight, but yeah, that's pretty much the idea. So guys, this video is kind of long, but I hope you learned something. I hope that you learned a lot. I'm sure it was really helpful. Literally, you're learning how to grow your hair to the middle of your bag by doing absolutely nothing. Definitely gonna take me to waist length before the middle of the year. That's just it. That's where we're going, you guys. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. God bless you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know what other super lasting fair tips you have for literally growing your hair without putting in any effort or doing anything. Again, thank you for watching. Um, share this with your friends and your loved ones and subscribe to my channel. Turn those notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. Okay, ta-ta for real, you guys. I'll see you in the next video.